Hey. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, that light back there might make someone go crazy. I'm going to turn it off. Mm -hmm. All right. It's five o'clock. Shall okay. we? Be shall we begin? Let's do it. Rebecca, you're on two uh, in two incarnations. Hey, Anthony. I know this isn't official. Hey, Anthony, how you doing, bro? Yo, you can't unmute yourself. It's okay. I see you. Hey, okay. So this is Watch Me Work, where the me and the title is you. And what this is is a work session for all of us, but specifically it's a work session for you it's given all y'all wonderful people an opportunity to talk with me about your work and your creative process while we don't have the time for you to read aloud from your work or anything like that we do have lots of time for you to talk about uh your work and get some tips helpful hints suggestions and definitely a lot of encouragement about you and your creative process so what we do is first we thank the public theater and howl around and Lolly and everyone at the Public Theater and HowlRound for helping us get this Zoom together. We've been doing this show for about 13, 14 years, so uh, yeah. And uh, second, we tell you how it works. We work together for 20 minutes by this timer, and then we take your questions. All work and all questions are welcome, and Lolly will help you figure out all the other cool stuff. <laughs> Lolly. Yeah, if you would like to ask a question and you're here in the Zoom with us, you can do that by raising your hand. You can use the reactions tab, which is likely in the bottom of your screen to raise your hand. If you have any trouble finding it, uh, feel free to message me in the chat and I can help you out. If you are watching live on HowlRound with us, feel free to send us your questions via the Public Theater's Instagram or Twitter accounts or Watch Me Work's Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's Hashtag H O W L R O U N D. And that's how you'll ask your questions. All righty. We're going to work for 20 minutes. Here we go. And boom.
Yay. All right. Now comes the fun, the more fun part. So uh, if you have a question about your work and your creative process, um, feel free to do what Lolly said, raise your hand or just wave like this and Lolly will unmute you. Awesome, Anthony, uh, you can unmute. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, what's up, SLP? Um, can we tell them? Can we tell them how how we know each other? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anthony, sure. I, Anthony recently made his Broadway debut in Top Dog Gun Dog. He is a fabulous actor and also a, a writer. So I told him, "Come, come to watch me work." So here he is. Hey, bro, how yeah. you doing? Yeah, good, good. Thank you for inviting me. This is this is really dope. I had no clue about this. Um, so thank you. Yeah, but I just had a question about your screenwriting specifically. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious to know what the biggest, because I've just recently gotten into screenwriting in the past couple of years mm -hmm. and I'm working on something right now. Um, and I'm just curious, the biggest negotiation you've had to make from playwriting to screenwriting, mm -hmm. right? I'm hearing a lot of, um, a lot of words around, you know, show don't tell around that principle of you know, you can't have as much dialogue in a screenplay as you can in a stage play. Um, but I mean, I as a writer, I, I think I enjoy characters with a lot of dialogue, so I'm having trouble trying to negotiate that. Plus, I see Aaron Sorkin do it a lot in, in his work, you know what I mean? So I'm curious how true that notion is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you've had to negotiate certain things moving from one mm -hmm. medium to the other, mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. That's great. Uh, but uh, th those things you said, I mean, I I think the, the biggest thing I keep in mind or I would suggest one keeps in mind when they're writing a screenplay is you got to think big, big The screen. I mean, even if it's going to be on, you know, your laptop, whatever, but big, you know, so yeah. that, for example, in a in a play, um, you, you know, it's just it's just you're not looking at this huge expanse. Do you, do you see what you see what I mean? It's like it's like you're seeing the sky, and then you can see a, a scene in a coffee shop, and then you can see a scene in someone's bedroom, and then you can see a scene on the street, on the boardwalk, and then you can see a scene. You know, you know what I mean? So, so you can. So that's what I mean by e expansive thought. Although there are plenty of great films that take place in in one room or two rooms or whatever. So, so nothing's a rule. It's just um, whatever you want to do, you want it to work. Right. So the mm -hmm. thing about dialogue, um, I would say keep that in mind. Gotcha. You know, I would yeah. say I would say, I would say keep that in mind because a lot of times, say you have a character who's who's standing in a field and the sky is big behind them and they're talking. Maybe they only have to say, "Where were you?" Mm -hmm. You know, because the the sky is going to speak for them, and the the size the size of it all is going to because there's a lot of dialogue going on or being conveyed in what the eye is taking in. Yeah, you, you yeah. see what I mean. In in a play, I mean, just think about Top Dog. The eye is taking in a pretty is, is one one set, right? Mm -hmm. And two people moving around, or sometimes just one person moving around. But in a, a film, the eye is taking in a lot more stuff right. it's be, it's being bombarded with a lot more information so maybe that's a good reason why we don't need so many words in a screenplay got you you know um yeah so just be keep keep your ear on that you know when a character's going on and on and on you might go okay let me trim it down mm -hmm. so that if you're writing your first or second or third screenplay you're at least being mindful of the rules or the conventions yeah. right when you write your first play or your second play, your 10th play, you, you just want to be sort of like, I know the convention, you uh -huh. know, and if you choose to depart from it, that's, that's okay too. Right. Right. You know? I, I would say also what you want to do is even in a play, but especially keep it moving, keep it moving. You know what I mean? Don't sit on anything for too long. I, I, that's what I would suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep Keep it moving. Um, some some I've heard some some uh, suggestions like get in as late as you can and get out as quick as you can. You know what I mean? So start the scene as late as you can and get out of there as quick as you can. Keep it 
What's the scene about? Boom. It's the same thing, though, in, in, a, in a well in a well written play like Top Dog Underdog. You know, I mean, you know, what's the scene? What, what's it about? What are they doing? What do they want? Boom, boom. Here they are. Now they're gone. You know, we don't we don't linger or wallow or, you know, unnecessarily unless that's part of the a real integral part of the storytelling. Mm hmm. You know, also in a film, you can use voiceover. Woohoo! You can, you, you know, um, so there are all these cool things you can do in film that you, that you can't do with a play. Um, also read lots of play uh, screenplays. Mm -hmm. That's super helpful, right? Yeah, for sure. And watch lots of movies, you know. Yeah, that's the phase that I'm sort of in right now is just like taking in a lot of film just to mm -hmm. watch the structure of it. Yeah, watch the structure. It's that's fun. That's enjoyable. You know, that's a real enjoyable thing. Yeah, uh, and it's relatively inexpensive now that we all have you know these laptops and whatnot. You know, right, right, right. Is that is that help? What what else? Yeah, no that that's that's extremely helpful. That was my that was just like my burning question that I had for you was just the negotiations that you found that you had to make moving from one to the other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I, I mean, I think my own eye is more tailored to, you know, I study theater, so it's more tailored to theater and, and plays mm -hmm. um, and text. But I'm learning that it's it's just a different medium in film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But it's still but still, still, still story is really important. You know, no amount of flash, you know, you see all these flashy film, you know, it's like, who cares? Or you go to a play and you see people, whatever, swinging through the air and you're like, who cares? What's the story? So the story is really important. Um, you know, however you decide to tell that story, that's still very important, uh, no matter if you're working in film or, or TV or theater. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So thank you. Hey, you're welcome. And come back. We're here. We're here. most Mondays. Okay, dope, dope, dope. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Oh, MC. Hey, MC. Are you really on a beach? You're not, are you? No. Oh, I'm visiting some family in New Jersey and it's freaking cold. So I was, I was transporting myself somewhere warm. Very nice. Yes. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about point of view mm -hmm. and a novel, not a play right now, okay. but I'm, you know, about telling this story and um part of it is set in in new york in the 1940s and then there's a segment that's in the 1980s and i have been i've sort of just grappling with i i told it from the guy uh leo's close third i was doing that a lot uh-huh and and i thought oh Oh, maybe I should nah, maybe the modern uh the 1980s him I could do in like I first mm -hmm. person okay distinguish the time periods but I don't know I I can't tell if it's uh I don't know I'm just not sure I'm in oh. that sort of like just gotta keep at it stage but mm -hmm. it would be get a nudge like what's your what's your take on point of views sure 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 um i'm trying to hear what you're saying mm. so do you think so quite a couple questions do you feel that you need to change the point of view from the in the time period so that the the reader will know that it's a different do you think that's the only way they can distinguish no, I, I just, you know, I didn't know. It's this guy's story. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's an immigrant. I mean, you know, but he um, and he had to flee some pretty terrible things in his hometown. And he had to do some really cruel things to be able to stay mm -hmm. in the country. 
-hmm. And I didn't know whether I should try to, I don't know. I didn't know what was more authentic. Am I using the word right? If I say that authentic, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't, I mean, I, oh, that's, you're, you're a dear. Um, just about the word authentic. Yes. How about, how about we say that it is authentic to use that word in whatever way you want? Oh. Because I, it, you're conveying some meaning, you know? Mm hmm Right. So you're good on the use of that word. Number one. Okay. Number two, how can we um, help you choose which groove to run your river in? Yeah. You know, and this I'm I'm hearing you talk about him. Um, so here's a question. Another question uh, in your writing. Have you written more? Plays or novels or short stories? Um, I would say novels. Okay. 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 I did a couple play unfinished. I mean, it just, I don't, I don't think. It's all good. It's all good. I was just trying to, I'm just trying to help you find the, the groove. Um, what uh, did you come up with against some obstacles with the third person? I was afraid I was describing too much and too much exposition, you know? So what you said really um, earlier really resonated with me, the, you know, start the scene late, get in, get out. Cause you know, I tend to linger and. Yeah, but, but, that, but MC that's for a film, you know, that's for a film. So, I mean, while it's, it's it, good advice is good advice, but, but in the context of a novel, um, think of uh, Charles Dickens, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he lingers, <laughs> um, you know, and, and he does a lot of writing the third person. I would, um, my, my feeling is do it in the third person because then it, because this person has done some horrible things. And it'll allow you to have a little bit of, you can sit beside him as if you were sitting beside him on the bus mm -hmm. or watching him walk down the street. You don't have to walk in his shoes. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? You I, don't have to, right? You do not have to yeah. inhabit him. You know, you can just be, he can just be your next door neighbor, you know, right? He can, you, he can be, look, he, there he is walking in the park. You just, just describe him. The lingering, yes. all that, that, that you can trim down in editing later. Okay. All right. Okay. So try, try, try third person. I will. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And you said third person close. What does that mean? I don't, I don't understand that term. Sometimes that uh, I've been reading those craft books. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, instead of the omniscient, you go really close, like uh, Leo counted the spaces where they're to, so you're you're right beside him, sort of like. Okay. Okay. Good. That, that sounds uh, that that sounds really gorgeous. Leo counted. The spaces. God, too encouraging by those words. Those. Oh, but it sounds gorgeous. Do you have a game plan that's going to get you to the first draft, the end of the first draft? Um. I thought I did, but I, I think I need to uh, tweak it a lot. <laughs> I don't have a great game plan. I thought I, I had one ending and then I wanted to, um, then I'm not sure. So, but, but do you have sort of a, like today you're going to do X amount by the end of the week, you will have done Y amount. Oh, like, like, oh, like word, word sort of, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want, got, I want the schedule. The schedule. Yeah, I want the shitty final draft, first draft done in um, in two months. Good. Yeah, because I've been working on it a long time. Very good. Very good. Okay, good. Good. And remember, it, it has to be a shitty draft. If you make it like really good, you're not doing your job. Yeah. Just, you know, get, get to the finish line. Okay.
in the third person close. I love that. Leo counted the spaces. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Thanks. Thanks, MC. Uh, Kimmy, you are next. Hey, Kimmy. Hi, thank you. Look at the uh, shadow. Is that a shadow? No, those are glasses over your eyes. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting in the sun getting some vitamin D. <laughs> nice. nice. Taking the taking full advantage of my location. <laughs> um, well, you. And anybody who's cold is welcome to come stay with me. We have a we have a spare room. So if you get six twenty degrees. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. Uh, everybody's questions. I I I feed off of all of that as well. And it, it struck me to 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 talk about um, the last time we talked. I was uh, struggling with the fact that I'm changing the the character from being an alcoholic and a drug addict to just you know finding her way um through sexual childhood abuse without any trope i guess um uh because it really it, i know it's loosely based on my life but it is that's something I, I have not experienced. So I don't feel that it's authentically mine to say. Um, so I was trying to struggle, figure out, okay, well, how did I survive? How did I get through all of this? How did I? And I was talking to a friend of mine who's an actor and out of, out of no place, I just said, I just went into my Jersey. I was like, so you sat for two hours and there's no arc, there's no nothing. She don't know how she got from A to B. Why? Cause life don't have answers all the time. You don't know. You just put one foot in front of the other. Why? Cause I'm a woman. That's all I know how to do. Blah, 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 blah. And he said, there's your ending because you know, like, he says, I was immediately captivated. And he said, and sometimes we just don't have answers. Sometimes, and I was wondering what you thought of that as an ending. All endings are great. Everything, <laughs> yes. Hey, Kim, you know, Kimmy, it, it, whatever is going to get you there is a great way place to be. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. There, for for you know, every pot has a lid. You know, just drive toward that ending and park it there you know um, god i love you so much <laughs> I mean, you have to you know we we have to continue to be you know brave enough to just try something you know yeah you know thank you so much i appreciate that do you have a game plan as to how much you're going to write every day and when you're going to reach your ending you know, you just asked them see that. And I thought to myself, that's a really good question because I hadn't until you asked her that. And I thought to myself, you know, I really can put this to to good use and I, I can have it. Don't even think about barking. Um, my dog, she's sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't have uh, a game plan, but as soon as you said that, I thought to myself, you know, by the end of January, I should have this rewritten again with the revolving door and the new ending. Great. There you go. And so by the end of January means, you know, and you'll look at your calendar or whatever, and it means a certain number of pages a week or whatever. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And just because really, what else are you doing? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what else? Are we, what else? What, what? You know, it's it's kind of the, the best thing to do. So, yeah, I do appreciate that so very much. I mean, everything that you say, it just you're you're like this surgeon and you go right into the heart and to the meat of everything. And I've never met anybody like you. I just, and I've met a lot of people, but I just find you so, I don't know what it is about you, but you speak to my heart, you speak to everybody else's heart and we're just better writers because of you. And I really thank you so very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. That's so kind and loving. I really appreciate that. And that's why we're here, right? Yeah, it truly is. It truly is. This is why we're here. I'm, I'm so, I really appreciate the, uh, the public theater and HowlRound for 
coming on board so be- I mean, for supporting the show way back in 2008 when we started, but then coming on board uh, during COVID and helping us with the Zoom and the whatnot, because it really makes it easier for people to 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 join to join in and and uh, I really feel like it's an integral part of the public theater's mission to provide you know a community some community engagement you know what I mean with all kinds of folks. Yeah, um, I mean I'm a better writer because of being here and listening to everybody, listening to the questions and listening to the answers, you know, and to the struggles. Because sometimes I think I'm by myself in those struggles, and then I hear somebody else. You know, where where I hear a struggle somebody had, and I didn't go, oh shit, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> you know, right. so it's just it 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 has changed me profoundly as a writer and as a person. Uh, so I really I thank you so very much, and everybody. Thank you. It's, and it's and it's fun. Woohoo! All right, Kim. Yeah, it so. Uh, yeah, especially and and hold on to those those feelings, you know, during the holiday season because the holiday season can be kind of you know, fun and festive, and it can also be kind of a drag. So, oh, you it's know. never been fun for me. I hate this time of year. There you and go. I- so you know, <laughs> keep, keep, the, keep the good feelings um, close, and and it's so great that also how around in the public that we they uh, what do you call them lolly stockpile these what do you call it archive? Yeah, Stop. we have an archive. <laughs> <laughs> archive them so if you feel like you know next week because it's going to be a a week off you know just click on one that we already did and just sit there and like have it like running in your life because the idea is to fill your head and your life your head as much as you can with positive stuff yeah Uh, because we're all so influenced by what comes out of our mouth and and you know negative stuff going around. So if you can fill your keep your head filled with positive stuff, it's, it really helps, especially during these these holidays. Yeah, I, I cut off social media during this. I get off Facebook and everything this time of year. And my birthday's the day after New Year's, so everybody's drunk or dead or hungover. Or <laughs> so it's always been a drag. So this is uh this is such great advice because. When I'm steeped in a creative project, I don't think about other stuff like that. So it's right. really good advice to to go to the archive. I never think about that. Thank you. Cool, cool. Anybody else have a question? Larry, and then we'll do Mary afterwards. Hey, Larry. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Good to Hi. see you, SLB. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, no one was talking, so I thought I, I have something I'm curious about. I don't know if it's a question. It might be a little bit of a can of worms. Uh-oh. But I was wondering if you ex- have any experience. Uh, I haven't done this myself, but I have a writer friend who I meet with every day. And he kind of went down the rabbit hole of using open AI as a writing tool. Mm. And I'd wondered if you'd experienced this because he's been sending me samples and it's eerie, remarkable, scary. Um, How strangely eloquent, like the, the computer learned his style. He fed in a bunch of pages of his writing and asked it to write a scenario in his own style. And it certainly didn't do it perfectly, but it wasn't bad. And I just, I just wondered if you'd had any encounters with this technology Mm -hmm. and, and if you had any thoughts about, Mm -hmm. is it, is it fair to use this kind of technology as a tool? He had to kind of figure out, you know, where he was starting to feel like it was a, a little bit of a drug, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. And where he was losing himself and where it was actually uh, a sounding board kind of tool. Mm -hmm. So he sort of uh, shared with me his process of learning to engage with it constructively. So I just wondered if you had any thoughts about it. Oh, oh, that's a really good question. Oh, boy. Um, I think um, I would say it depends what you want. (laughs) I think a lot of people want to have written. Yes. 
you know, right? They like, I've been yeah. guilty of that myself, yes. Oh, you know, sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, you know, we, we all want to, you know, because because sometimes, you know, the 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 creative uh, cre- the creative act is 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 difficult, you know. So we all want to have written. Um, so there's that. So if if one, not you, Larry, but if somebody is a person who wants to have written, then this is a great tool. <laughs> <laughs> Push a button, learn my style, hurrah! You know what I mean? <laughs> um, that's what one wants. If you want to write, then then that involves a certain amount of work and discovery, you know? And so I would say that that's a little, it gets a little tricky there, you know? Yeah. I would also say that what one, one style, that's very interesting because, for example, my style 20 years ago is not my style now. So if I were to feed in my style, what does that even mean? You know, I, me as a person 20 years ago, I'm, we, 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 what did it? What do they say? The scientists, you know, we replenish ourselves, you know, renew ourselves every seven years. So, what does that even mean? That means a great. That means McDonald's. If you <laughs> want to eat at McDonald's, <laughs> it's food. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you want to, you know, get a little like I don't know. If you want to have the same kind of relations with your spouse every night whatever go for it. you know what i mean just push the button and there you go um you want to make writing or, or creative work cookie cutter because you figured out the formula that works and all your work is going to be like that great i mean that's so that's no i don't think that's a crime you know yeah i yeah i mean and again you know it's like it's like okay i want to go to you know, uh, uh, I want to go uptown, uh, you know, whatever, to Lincoln Center. Am I going to ride the subway or am I going to walk? Well, I want to be there. I want to ride. Yeah, I want to get there. So so there's there's ways that we can all say, well, you're not really doing it for real. Mm-hmm. But it depends what you want. And that's a per- question you ask to yourself in your heart and be like, you know, what do, what do I want? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't do it myself because I thought I would be up at night thinking, was it my idea? Right, <laughs> and right. it would actually start to block me because I, I but for him, it's sort of uh, I don't know for him. He sort of found this this groove with it where it it challenges him back and then he responds. It's sort of like a a partner. So I was just uh, yeah, it's just an interesting, mm-hmm. especially to see the examples there they're sort of remarkable so uh yeah. thank you i was just very really interested in your thoughts uh, yeah. make, your answer makes perfect sense yeah and I, I don't know i mean it's so funny i would i guess i wouldn't want to see i mean to be honest i'm gonna say something kind of weird i see a lot of people writing in the store in the in the style of susan laurie parks <laughs> people do it i'm like thank you you know uh so i you know i don't know i don't i don't know i don't know I don't, i'm i'm but I, I probably would if I could. But no, but I'd like, I'd like to open the computer and go, what am I doing? And have to figure it out. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, who am I today? Yeah. This year I'm writing this kind of play. Oh my God, what does that even mean? What does that mean? I'm growing. Oh my gosh, what does that mean to the world? You know, I I, I enjoy those kind of challenges. Yeah, it's interesting. I have a friend of mine who who talks a lot about getting current with yourself, which mm. reminds me of what you just said. And I I, wow. I think that's that's really profound. So that is exactly it, Larry. You want to you want to get current with yourself. You want to, yeah. You want to, and and if you want to get you know godsy about it, you know, the spirit is a spirit of freshness. You yeah. know that they, they, you know manna is a thing that comes every day on the ground. You can't just store it up and be like, yeah, I'm going to just you know. It's a it's a it, the the spirit is a spirit of freshness. So you wake up in the morning, you say, Spirit, what you got for me? And that's. Uh, then you're in the field yeah. of great possibility. Love it. You know? yeah. yeah. So, but what a, what a great question. Oh my gosh. Now we all got to go and try it or get it over the, over the holiday. We're be careful. Be <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> um, we have Mary up next and then Lynn will put you on deck if we have time um, after Mary. Thank hey, you. Mary. Hi. 
Hello. Hello. Um, so I wanted to talk about getting to the shitty first draft. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because I have a hard, I have a hard time with that. So I'll tell you specifically why. Um, so the first, so I've been working on a play um, that was born, meaning like the, the central idea, the first scene, the, the contours, some characters, the ending wasn't, took me a long ass time to figure that out, but I finally did. And now I'm just like talking to people and rewriting it. And I feel very comfortable in this space, mm -hmm. the editing, the, well, what does she want? What does he want? What is happening here? That process. And other, other sort of bursts of writing that kind of come out where I feel like I have a handle or, or I can kind of really channel the character's voice. I feel comfortable with that. And I think it's because my, um, I started out as an actor, I started out in my body and as an interpreter, I, I don't wanna say this out loud, but that, you know, there's a little quiet voice that, that says, you know, like, okay, I'm not a writer, but I'm writing. So I don't wanna go there, but there is something about the language part of it that it's just, it's not, it doesn't come um, easy, it's work and I'm down for it. That said, so I have another two ideas for these plays. And these aren't, these aren't like born, they've, they've become sort of, um, um, I, have, I have the stories, the contours, I have the characters and one is a farce, I love farces, I don't know how the fuck to write a farce. It's hard. And then the other one is, is like a fake documentary theater. So, and the people are, they're very different from me. Like I need to go hang around some people like the people in these plays, get, you know, get a feel of the language. That would be fun. Okay, beyond that, when I sit down to even just be like, okay, I'm just going to write whatever and not judge it. It's, um, uh, I feel like I'm in, like I'm a first grader, just like learning how to write. It's that sort of painstaking, even if I don't have a judging voice, even if I really said, you're not here right now. So, yeah, that it's, it's, so I'm just wondering like, how can I like uh, get, get it so I can just write a, a, a shitty draft in two or three months? Um, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> Larry's, got, Larry's got an AI program that you could do. <laughs> I mean, that, that's an idea. If you, I mean, I'm sure you could go online and get one of them, you know, that'd be cool. Um, okay. And, and okay. Number one, Mary, be great. I, I love your question. Be mindful of everything that comes out of your mouth. So folks, when we go, I don't want to say this, I shouldn't say it, but I'm like, ah, break, break, stop. Okay, but um, blah, 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 some bullshit about myself that I'm in. You know what I mean? I mean, Mary, if I said that to you, what would you feel like? Damn, bitch, why are you talking to me like that, right? Or or some version of that, wouldn't you? I mean, right? You'd be like, why is she saying that about me? So I'm like, why are you saying that about yourself? Because who you're the you're most influenced by one person's opinion, your own. Uh, everybody. The person who has the most influence over your, where your head's at is your head. So if some stuff comes out of your head and your mouth is closest to your ear, like it's just going to crawl. Right. Okay. So, so change the way you talk about yourself. Right. Okay. And that sounds all new agey and it is fine. It also works. The other thing is use a timer 
How many pages do you got to just let, let's do the farce? The one that you don't know how to write. That's funny. Whatever a farce is, I'm not really sure. I didn't go to grad school, but you know what one is. You yeah. love farces. You love them. How many pages is it going to be? I don't know. 110. 110 pages. Great. Okay. What page are you on now? Uh, zero. I have a ton of notes. Great. Okay. So you start writing, like how many pages do you think you can write a day? If you spent 30 minutes a day writing, are you a fast typer? I'm a very fast typer. Um, I'm a, I'm uh, a more methodical thinker. Good. So type faster than you think. Okay. <laughs> Done thinking. Stop thinking, Mary. Stop. It's not helping you. So, okay. So I'll. So do you have an outline? Do you have an outline of your play? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the clock. We've got two minutes. So I want to help you because then it's going to be the new year. Do you have an outline of your play? Do you have a game plan? Do you have a roadmap? I, I have. I have major contours. Yes, right. I have characters, okay. contours, have contours, contours, what great. they want. Yeah. Great. Okay, so you know the signposts. You know the general direction. Yeah. Okay. See if you can write, you know, for 30 minutes a day, see if you can get two pages done a day. I was thinking two pages. Okay. Two pages a day. Set your timer for, set your timer, not your phone. Get a timer. You know, there's just a timer. Set it for like 30 minutes a day. Pick your favorite time of day, one time when your kids or your spouse or whatever your roommates or your neighbors aren't bothering you, whatever time of day that is, sit down for 30 minutes and type out your two pages. And the rule is they have to be shitty. Okay. They have to somehow adhere to the signposts, guideposts, general contours that you've already laid out. And two, they can't be good. So if, if you write two pages and they're not good and they adhere to the general contours that you've already lined up, yay, you win you get to go on to the next day and do it again and just keep and doing I can, it. And I can write at, at any signpost. Like I, it, I would suggest writing in order, Mary, stop thinking, okay. stop, stop. Really, I'm serious. This is up from me to you. It's not gonna help you. You need to surrender yourself to the power of the spirit who is a better writer than you. All right. And you need to, fall into the arms of the great river and say, here I am. I'm just going to trust that you're going to get me there if I put my boat in the water. That's a big part of writing. And that's why we do it, because we love that feeling. And allow yourself to have that beautiful feeling that comes when you say, I am surrendering myself to the great order of the universe. You've seen the pictures on that new telescope they got. Dang, right? Don't you want some of that to help you with your work? Oh my goodness, it's out there for you. It's saying, hello, I'm here. Or hello, whatever it sounds like, right? Right? Okay, it's out there. It's available to you. All that energy and power is available to you. It says, come on, just lean into me. Lean forward, lean back. Let, let, me, let me carry you a little bit, right? Okay. All of us, it's there. And not even because it's Christmas, almost. Or Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah, people. Happy, merry Kwanzaa. Merry, happy Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Hanukkah Christmas. You know what I mean? All the holidays. We love all the holidays. We love all the spirits. We love all the gods and goddesses and entities. Right? Okay? But now's the time. Give yourself a gift. Right? The world is, a, you know, can be, there's a lot of really great energy in the world. Give yourself a gift to connect to that energy. And it starts with you, with you, with the way you talk about yourself. The way you think about yourself. You owe it to yourself. Get, and the world needs your positive energy. It really does. And if you don't believe that, then believe something else. But Right? Doesn't it? Doesn't the world need the love that you give, doesn't it? So the best way to give love is you start here by giving love here, and it helps you give love to other people. All right. Thank you, SLP. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Two pages a day, Mary. And everybody two else. Pages. Two shitty pages. Everybody else. <laughs> everybody else. Get a game plan. It doesn't have to be two pages. It can be five. It can be one. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It can be 15 minutes. It can be an hour, whatever you're comfortable with, just give yourself a, a holiday gift. 
of like, I'm going to do, I'm going to do some of my work and it, it's going to help you feel so good. And then you're going to be able to share that good feeling with people in your life or total strangers. <laughs> All right. We love you. When are we back, Lolly? We are back in January. Yes, we are back on January 9th. So we're taking a short break for the holidays and then we'll be back And the sign up sheets already on the website. So register for January 9th and we'll see you then. Thank you, Lolly. And seriously, if you feel like you want to have some, some watch me work, go into the, the, the lockdown, what's it called? The, the archive. archive. <laughs> into the archive. And there we are talking just like this. And it's, it'll help you feel that comfort and joy. You can also turn, if you have a TV, turn on the fake fire, you know, the fake fireplace. It's really nice. Just saying. <laughs> so love you guys. Happy <laughs> Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah Kwanzaa. We love you. We'll see you in 2023. Woohoo! Okay. Yeah, 2023. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.